Welcome back to our episode of FSI DFS Baseball Pick Show. I'm your host, MegaRuler31. Feeling much better. Thanks for the well wishes. Um, funny story. Uh, yesterday was the first day I actually felt good. I went into work, worked a full day. Then I drove $4, four hours down to pick up my daughter from college and then bring her home. So during, I was like, you know, listening to different information, like trying to break down. So as soon as I got home, I could... Um, do my final research, film a quick video for everybody, and uh, then upload it first thing in the morning to get it out to because I know it's an early slate today, starting at uh, one ten. And I knew there was weather concerns, but I woke up this morning and like two of the games were canceled, which I mean, they might have been canceled last night. I just failed to look at that. I was just in such a hurry to get the video produced. So now I'm re-recording it. So, um, but but it's cool because, I mean, it's a nice small slate here. It's, it's down to four games. None of the rest of these games should be in any jeopardy. So, um, again, I think, you know, if you're playing 150 max, I, I think you got to keep like each team and each pitcher in consideration but if you're going a little bit less i'm going to help you try to narrow it down i i think it's our first course field slate uh and i think a lot of uh the chalk is going to go there and i think i can tell you like what a lot of builds will probably end up being so let's try to be a little bit different if, if you want to go that direction and cash that's perfectly fine i mean you'll probably be like even with the field so you know if it if the chalk works which it has a lot of days um so far this season then that's that's perfectly cool um that's great um but if um if it if it doesn't then it should give you a little bit of leverage to do well in cash and, and maybe you know get up there in, in some tournaments so uh guys always i'm just gonna run through the games quick and then we'll go through the breakdown of pitcher stacks and some lineup options for you and uh stick stay tuned to the end of the video because i don't have all the lineups up on the screen i've got a special gpp that um, i want to go over with you also today so uh first game we have boston and detroit 50 degrees but the wind is blowing out 12 miles per hour which always helps in boston got chris sale and spencer turnbell now sale is is back you know he's getting older we'll, we'll have to see it is detroit i mean i know chris sale has been rough recently but detroit has also been rough hitting i mean they were amazing in spring training but like i keep on saying a lot of the guys that were doing really well aren't on this team which maybe gives us hope for the future that they're going to be able to really put it together and um you know, have a, a decent young team kind of like Baltimore does now and Arizona starting to put together. Maybe we'll see some of these guys later on in the season. But Boston has been doing well also recently. I wouldn't say they're exactly um, have like a red hot start, but I think that, you know, they've been um, performing well. They're, they're starting to put things back together with the addition of like Turner and Yoshida on the team in Duvall, I think, you know, bringing up like Cassis and I think they've got some other young players in, in the mix too. Um, that would be really cool. So uh, I think, you know, sale pitching wise, I think he's going to be like the, the chalk, especially on FanDuel with, with his pricing. Uh, Turnbull on the other side, I would absolutely not touch. He has struggled wasn't getting spring training, was hit hard in his first start. And with the wind blowing out here, I think this Boston team, with especially with these left-handed power bats with Devers and Yoshida and, and Cassis and Verdugo, I, I just absolutely would not touch him at all. Um, again, if you're playing 150 max, then probably include him, but I only use him like 5%. But uh, I think he'd probably be the the second lowest owned pitcher that you would want in your player pool, but sale um, definitely is in play. Love the Boston bats. Um, again, we'll, we'll get the course when we get the course, but I, I think they're going to be my favorite stack of the day, just with the wind blowing out and just how bad turnball spin Detroit, I think obviously makes a number, a perfect leverage stack against uh sale. And just um, in case he does struggle, uh, not a ton of power here, but you, you never know with some of these guys, especially with the wind. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. 
next game up, we have San Francisco and we have the White Sox. Again, we have wind blowing out of 14 miles per hour. It's 48 degrees. It's not Wrigley wind, but it's still in Chicago. So wind does help the ball travel. Alex Wood, this is his first start of the season, but he did have, um, you know, plenty of pitches in spring training. So he should be pretty stretched out. I don't think he's going to go like three or four innings. He should at least be able to make it a five, maybe, maybe six. And the White Sox against, even though they've got a lot of right-handed bats here that usually are decent with power against left-handed pitching, just so far, they just really haven't struck out a lot, but they haven't um, like crushed the ball a lot either. Now, maybe with the wind blowing out, but it's only 48 degrees too. So, I mean, it's a little bit cooler. The ball doesn't fly as far. So we'll just have to see what happens there. So I think Woods is definitely in, in play here um as an option as your uh, sp2 probably and uh lance lynn i, I think is the same same thing against the san francisco team and, and of course you know I, I i like both sides too stacking with with the wind um i think chicago i would like a little bit more just with like some of their speed also that they have like stolen bases are so far up i think i heard a statistic yesterday that it's like 82% success rate is like Ricky Henderson success rate. Like the whole league has that. It's just amazing. Like some teams have been like undefeated. I think Baltimore finally got caught once yesterday, but like, it's it's just amazing. And maybe we'll see some tweaks to that rule, but just maybe a couple more engagements allowed by the pitcher or something, but just with them, not the pitch clock and everything. It's just, this is what MMLB wanted, but I don't know if they wanted it this much. We'll have, we'll have to see what happens. But the White Sox are definitely a team that has some speed and they can run. Uh, one person to really watch here is like Jake Berger. If he gets into the lineup, he should be super cheap. He's a right-handed power hitter. Um, had a really good season last year. And with Jimenez being uh, injured now, like he could possibly crack the lineup. So, and, and of course, you know, you got a lot of good lefty. Um, San Francisco always matches well. The only thing with San Francisco is sometimes is if they bring a lefty in for the bullpen, then guys get subbed out. So will like guys like Wade Conforto should play the whole game. Jack Peterson, um, he's sometimes a sub British, uh, Crawford, um, you know, I I really like them. Subbull's a really cheap catcher if he's in there at 2-1 um, with, with a good matchup there. So uh, those are some plays in that game. Next, we have the Blue Jays and the Royals. The Blue Jays, I'm watching a couple of the games just because they've um, been on like a, when I was, wasn't feeling well, just like sitting on the couch and throw them on. And uh, I mean, they – they're not off to a red hot start like we thought um, this team would. Like Chapman's been doing pretty good. Springer, Bouchette, I think Vlad had a homer finally yesterday. Uh, Marchero, I mean, he had a homer the other day. So uh, there's there's definitely potential here. Jordan Lyles, I don't think, is the worst pitcher in the world. Uh, it's 51 degrees and the wind's blowing in here. A little bit so I, I think the blue jays are definitely in play it, probably most people are going to play the course fields one but they're probably definitely a, a nice contrarian stack to play against jordan lyles but gossman by far is going to be like the number one pitcher i i um kansas city yes they've got some hits in in the series but they they just don't um really <sighs> It's not great conditions, and Gossman has just been such a really strong pitcher that it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, of course, on a small slate, I think they make a great leverage stack like Detroit. Detroit, I like far more against Sale than um, Casey against Gossman. So, you know, if you're doing 150 max, like put your percentages low. Lyles, I think you can play as a cheap pitcher against the Blue Jays because, again, it is 51 degrees, and uh, the Blue Jays have – I can't, gone cold at some points and you know i have seen some you know i targeted like bubik with the blue jays like i think it's two or three days ago and like he had a couple strike like strikeouts against them and really um you know they they really haven't like 
knocked the cover off the ball. So I, again, there have been some home runs, there have been some hits, and I, I think the, the ship thing helps, especially Chapman. But I, I do think that Lyles, in if you're playing like large fields and want a, a cheap uh, SP2, I think it works. But I think there's enough value, especially you know with Washington being in cores and being so cheap that I don't think you really need to go there. But again, like I said, if you're playing large fields, I, I think you know maybe 10, 15 percent Lyles max would would be fine. But Gossman, I think is definitely your SP1 here, and Royals. You know, if if you want to play some of them, especially like, you know, Vinny Pascartino here, left-handed power hitter. Perez is always decent. Um, you know, Reyes is better against lefties, but, you know, he did have a home run the other night against a righty who just left the ball over the plate. So um, Jackie Bradley Jr., I, I know he's like at a huge like K rate, but he seems like he's in a base a lot and he's always a threat to steal. And he's like 2 2 really cheap. So, but again, I don't th- really think you need this unless you're trying to get really contrarian on a small slate and, and, and trying to take down GPP. Final game, we get to course 10 total here. Uh, Washington Nationals and the Colorado Rockies, you know, kind of wish it was another team in cores against the Rockies. But, you know, a couple factors with Coors here. It's 50 degrees, so, I mean, it's one of the warmer games on the slate, but 50 degrees really isn't that warm. The wind is blowing in right now at, like, 8 miles per hour, so it's not blowing out. So it's not like a hot day in Coors where the ball is going to fly. The air is still thinner. The ball is going to fly further, and, you know, singles might turn into doubles or doubles into to triples, things like that. Uh, but... Um, and Washington, you know, did, um, get to McClanahan, who's, who's a pretty decent pitcher yesterday. So we'll just have to see how this one plays out, but I think everybody's going to go here, but I really like the hitting conditions in Boston much better, even though it's Coors Field. And sometimes not necessarily the Rockies. Sometimes we don't see the, um, opposing team when they come into Coors Field, like, hit the ground running as much as they usually do. Sometimes it takes them, you know, a little bit more time. Like they need like one game and then by the second game of the series and then they're starting to, to really hit. I don't know if it's the travel or, or, or what for that. I mean, Washington, I believe was at home. So, or in Tampa, no, I think Tampa was at Washington, but anyways, they were on the East coast. So now that now they're flying all the way to the West coast of travel and everything. And it's an early game. So, We'll see what happens there, but at least they're not like super priced up egregiously for like a course slate, which which is good because it does provide some value for you. So pitching wise, Josiah Gray, he is the absolute no on the slate. Like I said, Turnbull's a no, Gray also. If you are doing um, a mass multi entry like 150, I'd only put him at like 3% just hint, maybe 5% like Turnbull, but I would not go over that. The only thing I'm thinking is if it is cooler, cooler in cores and, you know, the ball isn't flying and like the Rockies have some good hitters at the top of the lineup, but they just haven't been an explosive offense. Again, we haven't seen them cores yet this year, but, you know, we'll just have to see what happens there. Kyle Freeland, on the other hand, I think is someone that you can consider I mean, he's he's decent. Again, like I said, Washington has hit. They do have some nice power from the right-handed side of the plate. But I, again, I don't think you really need this discount on Freeland because I think between Gossman, Lynn, Wood, and Sale, there's enough value out there with like the certain plays that I'm going to give you when we start talking lineup construction that you don't really need to go there. But if you want to be contrarian and take a chance, Kyle Freeland, I think, you know, maybe if you want to go 15, 20 percent in your lineups, I'm perfectly fine with that. So and um, bat wise, you know, um, there's a real gift on on fan duelists like shortstop is seems to be like a, a dead zone today for like finding somebody like you pay all the way up for Anderson. But Profar is shortstop eligible on FanDuel, and that is just a beautiful thing because he is so cheap and he makes so much work, and he's leading off in Coors Field. Um, Switch hitter. I mean, what more could you ask for? Like, thank you, thank you, thank you, FanDuel, for that. Okay, so let's look at the lineup builds. So like I said, uh, Gossman is definitely going to be my SP1. 
I think that sale is going to be the SP2 here. But don't be afraid to be a little bit different and go up and play like Lynn or, or, or Wood there. I think I'm going to punt catcher. I'm hoping Sable's in there at um, with his uh, um, you know, he's like got the lefty uh, split advantage there. So that that would be good. Um, if not, I think I'm just going to punt catcher. Then your choice is pay up for Cron or Cassis. And I think my stack's going to be heavier Boston than Colorado. But I understand if you want to go Colorado, perfectly fine. Both against really bad pitchers. Uh, McMahon at second. Devers, like I said, shortstop is something where I'm probably going to punt. Unfortunately, Profire's not on DK eligible there. So, I mean, maybe I'll throw in Kiki Hernandez. Maybe if, as I was looking at it, I don't know. I didn't check it. The um red sox roster to be able to see like who's up and who's on the team but dollback if he's around um even though it's righty on righty like i take him maybe even like chang as, as a punt I, I just really detroit pitching is so bad and their bullpen is so bad that i just really think that if you want to finish off the Boston stack in this this position, whether it's Kiki or whoever plays shortstop, then that that's that's perfectly fine there. I really like Verdugo leading off. It's a great price um there. And then I um will take Bryant. If you want to try to get Yoshida in there, if you want to try to get um Profar in there as uh or you know finish off like it, it depends take a, a cheap person whatever works to finish out out your lineup um there it, it gives you a little bit of flexibility for gpp i'm going to start with lynn and i'm going to stack pretty much washington and um, throw in some plays for uh the white Sox. so re-re so i'm going to take his catcher here from washington um you probably have enough to get up to Gossman with the pricing, with the, how soft Washington is. But again, if you want to throw in um, sale or, or wood, that's that's fine too. Uh, so Berger, hopefully he plays. He's really cheap there at third base. Anderson and then Thomas Call, Mensis, or if you want to go more with um, – the White Sox, then you could put Roberts Jr. there, who should be leading off right-handed batter. And then, you know, whoever works at first or second base for you, if you want to go more Washington, if you want to go um, White Sox, if you want to take some one-offs that you like, like Cron and uh, McMahon would work there also, that, that gives you some options. As for FanDuel, I'm going to start with Sale or Woods. I, I, I think Sale is going to be the most popular, but – Sale, you can't get a complete Boston, Colorado stack. So you're going to have to go with one off. So first base, again, I'm taking Crown or Cassis. If you can make it work, then you can put the other one in utility. Uh, second base, I mean, there's lots of options. Either if you're trying to finish, I don't know if there's a really great Boston option on, on FanDuel there. But I think, you know, if you want to, if you can get, fit McMahon in there for the stack, that's fine. But Devers, Profar, the gift, you know, got to lock him in at, at um, shortstop there. Verdugo, Bryant, and then, you know, however, how do you want to finish this off? Like, where do you want to put the one off if you're if you're playing Sale? Um, and then if you're playing Woods, then there there's a Wood, there's a way to um, actually have a full Boston and uh, Colorado stack there. For GPP, give me Gossman. If you can figure out how to get Gossman in the cash one, perfectly fine with that. He's just about um, $1,000 more expensive. And like, I just didn't like the build as much with him, but I completely get it. If you think that that hitting with all these um, 50 degree days is not going to be as great, you know, even with the wind as I think it is, and you just want to go with like pure points, I think Gossman is definitely going to be your highest scoring pitcher. So, uh, you know, you can just throw him in there and then 
you know, take some cheaper baths to fill things out, maybe throw some Washington in there. I mean, that, that would work too. They're, they're cheap. Like we, we said, and I'll get to that here. So this sack is going to be Mensis. Give me burger at third base. If he's there, like I said, he's, he's really cheap. Um, Thomas and call from Washington and then Cron in this one. So I'm probably going to just keep burger as like the one off bat. And then I'm probably, it's going to be a full um, stack of the Coors game in, in the, in the GPP, just because I think like the Boston weather is going to be so much better. I mean, if you want to make that your cash and that that's perfectly fine too, I think maybe a lot of people will, will go that way. So um, hopefully that gave you some options. So, Talked about in the beginning of the show about like a secret GPP. And I think with sale being, um, I'm skeptical on him. So I really do think that we need to look at some Detroit stacks. So Detroit opens up a lot of salary. They're really cheap. So for, I'm not going to put them up on the screen. I'm just going to give you some ideas here. So Haas. Torkinson, Veerding, and Baez are the right-handed batters that I would take. So that fills your catcher, first base, shortstop, and outfield on DK. I'm going to fill in with Boston and um, maybe a, a one-off with Coors, depending on who my pitcher is. For FanDuel... If I go in and get what line I put for that. So again, you can easily get up to Gossman as your pitcher if you use Detroit. And you can take, again, Torkinson, uh, Baez, Haas, and Verding, or Verolding. And then, again, I'm throwing in a Boston stack and probably going to have enough money to take a one-off from uh, Colorado in there too so hopefully that helps you if um you have any questions you can hit me up at mcgrover 31 or leave some questions in the chat below i'm sorry it wasn't mckinley it was i who answered the question about the young baltimore pitcher yesterday and i thought you know with texas not being um a super elite offense that like he had enough stuff to come out there without much information on him to to do well and he, he didn't do well but he was he was dirt cheap so um, in GPP, I didn't think that I, I, would, I definitely took some flyers on him myself and it didn't work out. So I, I apologize for that call. Um, I will own that, but hopefully, you know, today's calls, um, are, are, are much better here. Um, looking forward to this, like, I usually do really well in all sports and smaller slates. I don't know why in, in EL, a lot of my takedowns have been on like the smaller, like three game, um, two game slates, uh, Major League Baseball, I think it's just sometimes when you overanalyze and have so many choices, it just like sends you into century overload. But when it's sim simpler and clearer and you can just kind of narrow down things to like who you want, I think like clarity comes in. And I think you're able to make a couple adjustments off of the rest of the field and that like can put you so far ahead. So hopefully that's what we've covered here today. So appreciate you watching. Again, thanks for your well wishes. I'm, I'm just glad I'm feeling so much better and able to do these got a big weekend coming up with a couple of nascar races unfortunately we won't have the lineups before lock but um i'll try to do some speculation videos after we see the um, practices on who's good for the truck race and the um cup race in the bristol dirt so hope if you're celebrating the easter holiday or traveling or anything um safe journeys to you all and if you if these videos help you as always please give us a like subscribe to our channel Share with your friends so they can um, come and enjoy and get this good information also. And if you want more information on FSI, FSI DFS, you can go to the description of the video and all the information is there. So thank you very much for watching. I will have tomorrow's video also. And uh, good luck in your contest today. And I'll see you next time.